We have backed ourselves into a corner and we've gone to the point of no return. Tomorrow's game against Real Betis is a must win for Barcelona. Let's get to it. Hello guys, welcome back to El Merengue Cule. A bit of a different scenario for today and possibly tomorrow. But let's go ahead and break down the Barcelona versus Real Betis pregame. Now, let's talk about why this game is so important to Barcelona. As you know, we are currently on a slippery, slippery slope in terms of La Liga where we have gone four games in a row without a win and we are going to be looking to switch the momentum for sure. We just had a very unconvincing victory against Dynamo Kiev in which a lot of holes in our team were exposed. So I know definitely Ronald Koeman is going to be looking to sort out the midfield, switch the momentum. Also, to add on to the pile, this is the last game before a two-week period in which international break will be played, meaning that however this game ends is going to be the mentality that's going to linger in the players, in Kuman. And, you know, if it's another loss, if it's another tie, if we keep dropping points, you know, Kuman, the, the pressure's going to start building up on him. This is why this game is a must-win. Now, if we look at the actual table for the Liga, we are currently sitting very, very low. And, you know... We're a team that we demand to be in that first and that second place every single season. We're going to have to start calling our way back. It's not going to be easy, but it's not impossible. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and break down just exactly how Real Betis has been doing and what they will do to try to damage us the most. So let's go ahead and break down their games in La Liga. So they are coming off a 3-1 victory against Elche. Pretty good. 2-0 defeat to Atletico and a 3-0 defeat to Real Sociedad. Very strong teams. I don't think uh, the defeat tells much. I think most teams in La Liga will lose to uh, an Atletico that is currently unbeaten and a Real Sociedad that is currently sitting first place in La Liga. Uh, a 2-0 victory against Valencia is a pretty big result. It would have been bigger had it been two or three seasons ago. But as we know, Valencia is currently on the come down. They're not looking as strong as we usually are used to seeing them in La Liga. And then, uh, finally, a 3-0 defeat to Getafe. Now, let me remind you guys that roughly about three weeks ago, Barcelona actually lost 1-0 to Getafe. So, you know, I, I think in, on paper, we are looking pretty even. They are currently higher than us in the La Liga table, but we are going to be heading neck-to-neck -neck to this game. If you watched that game against Dynamo Kiev, you must have noticed that the Barcelona midfield with Pjanic and Busquets looked very slow and that counterattack right down the middle, right down the, the backbone of our team was exactly what gave life to Dynamo Kiev. Now, I am 100% sure Real Betis watched that game. They analyzed it, they broke it down and they analyzed that flaw within us. And I'm assuming that is exactly where they're going to want to take advantage. Now, I would like to note that with players such as Fekir and Cristian Tello, they have the speed to break us down in the manner, and I am 100% sure that is what they're going to want to be doing. Now, how will Ronald Koeman line up for this game is going to be crucial. He has a lot of choices to make, and it is very important that he makes the right ones. In between the two posts, I don't think there's any questions asked about it. Ter Stegen is going to have to slot right back in. I mean, his performance against Dynamo Kiev was second to none. By far, man of the match in my eyes. In the left-back position, it should be Jordi Alba. If Ronald Koeman would have looked to give him a rest from that injury, it would have been against Dynamo Kiev. That didn't happen. The two center-back positions, I'm expecting Lenglet and Piquet. The young did not look the best uh, in that left center-back position, so I'm assuming Lenglet is going to retake that position in the right-back. We have two options, Serginio Dest or Sergio Roberto. Now, Serginio Dest did start against Dynamo Kiev. So, I'm going to expect Ronald Koeman to put Sergio Roberto at right back. Uh, we will see. Obviously, I would love for Serginio Dest to, to play right back as well. Uh, he's showing very promising signs. Maybe not the best game against Dynamo Kiev, but, you know, good signs nonetheless. In the left defensive mid position, we should be looking at... Uh, Frankie de Jong trying to re-establish that connection in the midfield at a little bit more speed than the partnership of Pjanic and Busquets as I had mentioned earlier and now to arguably the most important position in the team the right defensive mid who is gonna go there again both Pjanic and Busquets for me had pretty bad games against Dynamo Kiev so uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb I don't think it'll happen but I am praying that we see Ricky Puig 
finally get some minutes under Ronald Koeman. I mean, time and time again, our midfield has been lacking us, or at least that position in the midfield. You know, it's looking so, and you know, from the first minute to the last minute, Ricky Puch is going to slot back in there. Uh, we move on to the attacking mid. I don't. I, I think for sure Messi will slot in there. Again, if, if Ronald Koeman was going to rest him, it would have been against Dynamo Kiev. That did not happen. On the left-hand side, we should see Ansu Fati. Again, had a very, very good game against uh, Dynamo Kiev. Didn't get the his goal. Didn't get the goal at the end of the day, but he looked very scary. Breaking angles, taking good shots. On the right-hand side, again, another debatable position. We have, again, the, the, the trio between Dembele, Trincao, and Pedri. Now, Pedri has been ranking up a lot of minutes, very young, so I don't predict he'll play for this game, or, or start at least. And when we go with Trincao and Dembele, I'm going to go ahead and go for Trincao. However, Dembele could easily slot in there. And now for the striker position, I'm going to go with Griezmann. Again, he, especially after that sitter that he missed against Animal Kiev, a bit debatable. I mean, he had to score that realistically, and I'm pretty sure ooh, Ronald Koeman is not happy at all with that miss. But I'm going to go ahead and say Griezmann. And now, this is another factor why I want Ricky Puch to play this game. I think Ricky Puch is the player not only to run the whole game, to chase down balls, to win back balls, but to mainly penetrate through passing, through dribbling, which is exactly the type of... Uh, player, the type of midfielder that Griezmann needs for him to thrive. He needs somebody to take on a guy and then look to slot it in, kind of like what Messi is used to doing, but realistically, Messi has been looking a bit selfish when it comes to passing to Griezmann. When it comes to passing to Anzafati, there's no issues there. So I think Ricky Puch is the key to making Griezmann work. And we saw it happen last season, I just wanted to transition over to this season. So with that being said, we get down to the Best, the favorite segment of the pregame videos. Again, if predict down below what you what you think the score prediction will be for tomorrow's game. If you get it right, not only will you get a shout out from me in the post game analysis, but your name will go down into the Excel sheet. And at the end of La Liga, the person with the most correct predictions will get a jersey. Now you are not gonna want to miss out. So before I tell you my prediction, go ahead, comment down below what you expect the score prediction will be and as for me I'm definitely gonna predict that we are gonna drop a goal for sure but I'm gonna predict a 2-1 victory I think Fati is gonna get, a, get himself into the scoreline and you know what we'll go with the young is gonna get a goal as always guys please I ask that you drop a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video Hit that subscribe button, help us reach our goal of 2,500 subscribers by the end of the year. And as always guys, Visca Barca!